Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's webinar. I would like to remind you that this conference is being recorded. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. For those connected by telephone requiring operator assistance during the call, please press star zero. Web participants requiring support should use the chat feature on your screen. I would now like to turn this meeting over to your moderators, Neil Dreimer and Kirby Kirvin from CFHI. Please go ahead, Neil. Thanks so much. Hello and welcome to the informational call for the specialist is always in better patient care through remote consultation. This informational call is for the new 15-month Connected Medicine Collaborative that we're launching at CFHI in partnership with the College of Family Physicians of Canada, Canada Health InfoWay, and the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. My name is Neil Dreimer and I'm a Senior Improvement Lead here at CFHI and I'm pleased to be your host for today's call along with Kirby Kirvin, Improvement Lead here. Thanks so much for everyone who participated in the pre-webinar activity and for telling us where they are from today via our interactive map. And, and if you are just joining, please continue to, to uh, tell us, oh, the maps, the maps, maps off. Okay. So we're, we are really excited though because we, just to let you know, we have more than 110 registrants for today's session from across uh, 13 jurisdictions in Canada including BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, New Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. And I believe we also have people joining us from the states. It's clear that this topic is timely and relevant across all regions and provinces, and we are excited about the launch of this new collaborative. So, uh, as as I introduce our guest speakers, please take a moment to do the same using the chat box function. If you could tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you hope to get out of today's info call, that would be great. As well, if you could also let us know how many people are attending from your location using the poll on the screen. And please include yourself when, you, when you're putting this number down. So joining us as presenters on today's call are uh, Ma Ms. Margot Wilson. Margot is the director of the Providence Healthcare Chronic Disease Management Strategy. Throughout her 30-year career in healthcare, she has held various leadership roles in both clinical and administrative settings. She holds a Master of Science in Nursing from the University of British Columbia and continues her affiliation with the university in an adjunct faculty position with the School of Nursing. Margot is also a former, former CFHI Extra Fellow. As well, we have Gary Mazuita, who is past president of the College of Family Physicians of Canada. Prior to assuming his position as chair of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at Providence Healthcare in Vancouver in 2003, he was medical director of community and long-term care for the Re Winnipeg Regional Health Authority. He has also served as a member of the University of Manitoba's Research Ethics Board, as well as past president of the Manitoba College of Family Physicians. He is, he is currently a clinic, clinical professor of faculty of medicine at UBC and remains active in teaching research and clinical practice. Our third presenter is Dr. Claire Liddy. Claire is a family doctor and clinical investigator at the C.T. Lamont Primary Healthcare Research Center at the University of Ottawa. She has received international and national acclaim for experience in health services implementation research, particularly in the fields of improving access to care, chronic disease prevention and management, and the implementation of health technology. Dr. Liddy's interest in chronic care and self-management support originates from her clinical practice at the Ottawa Hospital Academic Family Team and she is driven by the goal of improving access to health service delivery for her patients and population. We'd also like to point out that in addition to these speakers, we have uh, members from our partner organizations joining us. So a warm welcome to Artem Savarov, who is the Director of Health Policy and Government Relations from the College of Family Physicians of Canada. Jane Sparks, who's a clinical adoption and clinical leader um, from InfoWay, 
as well as Tanya Horsley, the Associate Director Research Unit from the Royal College. Welcome to all of you as well. We are, we are so pleased to provide sim simultaneous interpretation for all our on-call webinars. This may result in a few short pauses in the dialogue today. We invite you to participate in our ch chat box today in either official language. So in terms of what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to start by discussing the issue of timely access to specialist care and profile some of the leading Canadian innovations that are achieving quadruple aim improvements in this area. We will then introduce CFHI's new 15-month Connected Medicine Collaborative, its delivery format, content, activities, and faculty. And we will then end the session by opening it up to you for questions and answers and helping you assess your readiness to apply for the collaborative based on enrollment criteria. So we do recognize that probably many of you are coming into today's webinar with questions already in mind. For example, you may be asking, is, this, is the collaborative about designing a technology solution or do you need to have a fully identified team before applying? You may also have some questions about who, can, who you can link up with at other organizations who are already undertaking this work in your jurisdiction. Over the next hour, we hope to provide further information around some of these questions, but we will also continue to work one-on-one -on -one with you to help, to help address these throughout the application period. We also encourage you to post any questions you may have in the chat box as we go, and we will have ample opportunities throughout the webinar where we can pause and take some of your questions as well as at the end of the presentation. So just a, a quick word about the Canadian Foundation for Healthcare Improvement. What we do at CFHI is accelerate healthcare improvement toward better patient and family experience of care, population health, and value for money in healthcare spending, the so-called triple aim. We do this by working with patients and families in the co-design of care, building up leaders to do improvement, applying improvement methods and collaborating to make improvement happen. Our work aims to help make, to help make best practices, for example, the best the proven innovations showcased in this collaborative and turn them into common practices by spreading and scaling them across Canada and possibly beyond. So as we mentioned, we're really excited because the official call for applications for the Connected Medicine Collaborative was just launched yesterday and this call will be open until May 4th. Beyond what we will cover in today's call, as you can see on the screen, full details about the collaborative can be found at our website at cfhi.fcast.ca forward slash access. So we, we say that this collaborative is about remote consult. But what do we mean by this term and who does it involve? At the heart of it, remote consult is really a provider-to-provider -provider advice and communication model around patient care. Such a model can take various forms, including e-consult or electric consult, which is done over electronic platforms, telephone consult, as well through the use of mobile applications. While the patient is always at the center of what is being discussed in remote consult, it should be noted that for the purposes of what we're talking about here, communication flows between providers and not to the patient. Most often, the remote consult involves communication originating from the primary care provider to a consulting specialist provider. However, we do recognize that there are variations and that 
who consults and who is consulted can change. For example, nurse-led clinics in remote communities linking with family physicians, or primary care providers connecting with addiction counselors. Another innovative use of remote consults could be in academic settings, for example, where it can be used to link up medical residents with attending physicians. So why is remote consult needed? Well, I don't think it would be too much of a surprise for many of you on the call today to learn that when it comes to access to specialist care, Canada has opportunities to improve. As many of you may know, recent Commonwealth Fund surveys have revealed that 7 in 10 primary care doctors in Canada say their patients often experience long wait times to see a specialist. The most recent survey on patients' healthcare experiences in 11 countries also found that Canada ranks last for patients who waited two months or longer for a medical specialist appointment, with 30% of Canadians waiting two months or more. These waits are particularly concerning because we know patients may face the greatest wait-related risk at the earlier phases of care before the disease has been conclusively diagnosed and a treatment plan established. So the degree of this issue demands a multi-pronged approach, including new models of care that have demonstrable results. The proven remote consult innovations profiled in this collaborative more than meet such criteria as both race and base have been able to show quadruple aim results by improving the health of the population, enhancing patient provider experience, and by lowering costs. So, when we talk about collaboratives, CF at CFHI, collaboratives are the vehicle for spreading evidence-informed innovation and best practices, such as remote consult. Here you can see a summary of the most common quality improvement collaborative components that were captured in a recent systematic review. It aligns well with how CFHI approaches the design and delivery of its quality improvement collaboratives by promoting a focus on improving provider practices or patient outcomes, by using structured activities for developmental team and cross-team learning, by combining expert evidence and evidence-based medicine and quality improvement with an improvement model that prior prioritizes measurement and feedback, and finally, by relying on multidisciplinary teams who are executing small tests of change. It's worth noting that the new 15-month collaborative builds off of CFHI's recent Connected Medicine e-collaborative, which just recently ended in January. In that collaborative, 10 teams from across Canada and internationally designed business cases and implementation plans for the remote consult services. Although the focus there was not on actual implementation, by the end of the e-collaborative, some teams were actually able to begin testing their service. Our new 15-month collaborative builds off this work and focuses on supporting teams in the design, testing, implementation, and evaluation of remote consult services. It's also worth noting that teams who didn't participate in the previous collaborative are still welcome to apply to the new one but should be encouraged to be aware, with, aware of and communicate with existing remote consult initiatives in, this, in their jurisdiction. The collaborative perspective references a map that shows past collaborative teams for your information. And on this slide, what we can see is just some of the positive feedback and testimonials we've received from the e-collaborative teams. So, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Margot Wilson, who will be followed by Dr. Liddy, the two leads of both the race and base projects, two of Canada's leading evidence-based and patient-centered innovations for improving access to specialist consults. 
Both innovations were profiled in the previous e-collaborative and will be a big focus of the upcoming collaborative. These innovations will act as prompts for creativity for the development of a remote consult service in your organization and region. Or, in some cases, actual implementation of a combination of the two. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Margot and Gary to first speak to race rapid access to consult expertise. Thanks, Neil. Um, so I'll be just talking, uh, giving a very brief overview of race um, and the model of care. Um, so just advancing the slides here. Oh. Okay, there we go. Um, so, so why did we begin race at Providence Healthcare here in Vancouver? And it, it really came about um, because family physicians, and, and Gary was the, the chair of the Department of, of um, Family Medicine at that point, and that was back in 2008. So family physicians here at Providence were really having a hard time accessing cardiology care. And there, were, there was um, no particular general cardiologist on call, it was the coronary care unit on call, and they were always really busy in a merger in the CCU. The cardiologists here are very subspecialized, and uh, often family physicians, if they knew how to connect with them, they didn't even know really which one to connect with. So family medicine and cardiology got together, they started a, a small prototype where a cardiologist carried a pager. Family Medicine knew that if they called that pager, they could speak to that cardiologist in a timely manner. And based on that initial model is how race grew. So um, at the, about the same time, we were looking at ways to improve communication access to specialists and improve those relationships. So it was all very timely. Specialists were telling us that they sometimes were seeing patients they didn't really need to see and, and they didn't really want to see those patients, but they were being consulted for them. Family physician feedback is that there were certain specialties they just couldn't get into. Um, as I said, a lot of them were very subspecialized and they were really looking for a simple way to communicate and gain access to the specialist. They wanted it to be physician to physician. They didn't want to have to go through switchboard, have a middle person triage the calls. And uh, no matter what meeting we were at, it always came out that, you know, it was like lots of that good old days when, when they were working sort of in the hospital with their specialist colleagues. They would bump into them, chat about patients. And so they were really missing that piece of it. And, and we were looking at a way to be able to communi communicate uh, or, or get these two groups communicating again. We helped some patient focus groups and the, what came out of those is that they really wanted their doctors to be connected, but more importantly, they wanted to make sure that they were connected to their doctors and not left out of the communication loop. So that was really good feedback that we got from the patients. So based on that, we decided that we would expand on the RACE model and RACE stands for Rapid Access to Consultative Expertise. It's a telephone advice line available Monday to Friday from 8 to 5. We started back in June 2010 with five services, and it's grown over the years now to uh, 28 services. We've had 25 to 30,000 calls, and we're continuing to add specialty areas on based on what family physicians are telling us. Uh, the, this slide shows our current services. Uh, several of them are provincial, and that really lends itself to a provincial service when there's not that many specialists in that particular specialty area. So uh, these um, groups do provide telephone advice across the province. We have some detailed information on the calls, and we've asked specialists in the past to um, sort of collect some data on us on the calls and send it to us. So based on that, we know 80% of the calls are answered within 10 minutes. 90% are less than 50 minutes, so it's a fairly rapid response rate, and it's not a long call, doesn't uh, pose a huge interruption to your day. At the end of the conversation, the specialist asked the family physicians if, in the family physician opinion, did that interaction avoid a face-to-face -face consult or an emergency department visit? So that's where that 60% and 32% come from. And in our evaluation, we did a simple cost modeling exercise that showed up to $200 um, an average of up to $200 per discussion 
savings, or, or cost avoidance, I should say. The, um, we still have our simple telephone line, but we also have uh, an app that we've been using since about 2015. And the app allows the specialist to be able to say, you know, I'd rather be initially contacted through a text or an email or phone me directly. It allows the um, specialist, the family physician, to put their information in once, so their name, their billing number. And so that information doesn't have to be gathered at a time. <coughs> We're working on and almost there to have some basic patient information exchanged at the time. And so we're, um, we're just about there. I think in the next couple months we'll be able to do that. So the specialists will have all the information that they need for their billing purposes. And they don't have to have a piece of paper at the time of the call and be writing it down. So that is just a really brief overview. I'm happy if anybody wants to email me for more information, I can tell you about the evaluation and, and how race is meeting the triple aim framework. Um, but for now, uh, that's just a, a very brief overview. And I'll pass it back to Neil. Thank you. Th thank you so much, Margo. Um, so in the interest of time, we're just going to move right along to Dr. Claire Liddy and the Champlain Base Service. If you do have questions for Margo or Gary now, we encourage you to put these into the chat box, and I can see some of you have already done that. Margo and Gary may be able to answer some of them via the chat box. Otherwise, we'll come back to these questions in the discussion section following the presentation. So over to you, uh, Dr. Liddy. Great. Thank you very much. So again, just a quick five-minute snapshot of what um, Champlain Base is, or eConsult, and just acknowledging uh, my team here in terms of the slides. Um, like uh, Margo and Gary, we did start um, quite a while ago, and the issue was access. And um, the issue was really from my perspective as a family doctor, um, again, having excessive wait times to be able to get my patients in and really wanting to be able to uh, have better access to uh, different specialty services. So um, we created then um, the e-consult service, which uh, essentially allows asynchronous communication between the primary care provider and the specialty service. And it's done on a secure uh, web-based service. And we have a, a, essentially a portal that you'll sign into. Um, it's all private and uh, allows you to transfer patient health information on that. Just in brief, I'll just show you the um, um, the template of how our system works, but you essentially sign on to the web page and your information is there. You select a specialty service that you're interested or, or you're looking for advice from. You can attach patient information like uh, images or you can attach a standard referral letter or you can put a video on. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's a drop-down list of all of the different specialty services that are available and I'll show a little bit more detail afterwards. And essentially, it's just a generic form for all different specialty services. So there's no um, very few mandatory fields. And it just allows you to submit that patient question. It gets assigned to a specialist who's on call for us based on their availability. Um, and within um, one week, we ask them to respond. So the service model is not for urgent, but really to respond um, within a week with some kind of an advice. Um, either refer the patient or an answer to my question, and also there can be a bit of a dialogue. At the end of it, uh, the primary care provider uh, is the one who closes the case. And then uh, we also had a survey that uh, they answer questions on. So just in brief, it did start back a few years ago. And uh, it's really grown uh, very similar to race. We've grown from five specialty services up to uh, 99 different ones. And I'll give you a snapshot of, of who you can access. And um, many, many primary care providers and nurse practitioners from across our region and also across Ontario have now joined in different regions. Um, and essentially, it's been very popular just because it's been meeting such a, a big demand. And these are some of the quotes from our participants. So the providers really love it. And also, the feedback from the patients is um, extremely um, uh, positive as well. So this is a list of the specialty services. And many of them added on just at the request of our primary care providers. We have a full slate of uh, pediatric specialty services available because we're partnered with our local um, tertiary care pediatric hospital. 
and then we have started to onboard and offer services available in French as well. So this just shows a bit of a timeline of the development and what's been very exciting in the last couple of years is that we've been working uh, very closely um, with sustainability and expansion and uh, working with our province and then also uh, outside of the province. So some of our impact um, uh, or results in terms of e-consult, what you can see is actually the response time is very quick. 60% uh, of e-consults that have been submitted do not require a face-to-face -face visit, so there's a huge proportion that are um, avoided and it, uh, the advice enables your primary care provider to basically um, deliver the care to you. And in some cases, though, a medical referral was prompted and that would happen much earlier than it would have if you uh, um, had not had access to it. We've done patient surveys as well, and as I said, patients are very positive about it, and they really like the fact that care is um, continued within their own primary care provider. They love the speed of it, and uh, they commented on the quality of the uh, response as well. So I think I spoke briefly to this. Uh, we're in full partnership now in Ontario with the Ontario Telemedicine Network and Ontario MD in the province, and uh, supporting um, an expansion in Ontario, and then also we have launched um, for the last six months in uh, Newfoundland. So we're doing a lot of uh, work in terms of policy and also uh, research work on the Champlain Basie Consult, so you can get a full list of our publications, and we have an ebook that we also uh, published, um, so that's uh, freely available to anybody. So in summary, um, this service really is uh, uh, an example of a very simple, straightforward uh, technology that really has enabled access uh, for now almost 25,000 patients uh, in our health region. So I'll stop there and like Margot, take uh, any questions online. Thanks so much, Claire. Um, so I know uh, we can see already that a lot of you are already uh, using the chat boxes, which is awesome. But in the interest, so what we're going to continue to answer questions via chat boxes. And what we'll do now, in the interest of time, is we're going to move along to hear more about the collaborative. Uh, continue to share questions for our speakers in the chat box, and we'll be sure to address them during the Q&A period at the end or our presenters may uh, answer some of the questions via chat box, which they've already done. So uh, what I'm going to do now is turn it over to my colleague, Kirby, who will provide further detail on the 15-month collaborative. Great. Thanks so much, Neil. So we're going to spend the rest of the call focusing on the key components of the upcoming 15-month collaborative, including its design, focus, and requirements for application. We'll ensure that there's time following this presentation for specific questions from all of you, but again, please feel free to chat in any questions you may have during the presentation. And depending on it, we can either stop and, and address these or make sure to focus on them during the, the discussion session. It's important to note that this collaborative is not uh, necessarily about implementing a technology solution. Um, but that it's about enhancing access to specialist consult by improving provider-to-provider -provider communication. To do this, our aim is really to learn from proven innovations already underway in Canada, like race and base that you just heard from, uh, to help inform the design, implementation, and evaluation of a remote consult service in your own region. So in this case, this 15-month collaborative really aims to support healthcare organizations towards testing, implementing, scaling, and evaluating remote consult service, turning evidence-based practice into common practices, enhancing quality improvement capacity within healthcare organizations, and working within a quadruple aim framework, which is really focused on improved patient experience, better health outcomes, improved cost efficiency, and improved clinician experience. So for those of you who know CFHI and our collaboratives already, you may know some of the great benefits of participating in one. For those of you who are new to a CFHI collaborative, here are some of the reasons a CFHI collaborative may be valuable to you and your team. For this collaborative, we will be providing seed funding of up to $600,000, which will be shared between up to 15 teams based on demonstrated need via the application process. The curriculum will include a specific focus on supporting teams in implementation, spread, scale, evaluation, and patient co-design. 
You'll become part of a larger peer-to-peer -peer network and participate with these networks on, a, on monthly webinars. CFHI provides support for performance measurement and evaluation. We'll be having a workshop for teams in Montreal, Quebec in November in conjunction with CFPC's Family Medicine Forum, and you will have access to online learning tools and activities. Most teams find extremely valuable the access to a network of expert faculty and coaches who can support teams on demand as they work through the collaborative. In terms of collaborative time frame, this is a 15-month collaborative taking place from June 2017 to September 2018. Our first orientation webinar will take place this coming June 14th. We'll then kick off our formal curriculum webinars, which will run from September 2017 to September 2018. Over this summer period, we'll spend time having individual coaching calls with each of the teams. Teams will be given access to an online learning platform where we'll store on-demand recordings of webinars, PowerPoints, worksheets, and resources. The platform will also provide a space for teams to network and share their progress and lessons learned with each other. As mentioned, we expect to have one face-to-face -face workshop in November in conjunction with CFPC's Family Medicine Forum in Montreal on November 8th and 9th. This workshop will be a great opportunity for teams to meet face-to-face -face and to interact in person with faculty and coaches as they start to design, uh, test, and implement their improvement. You'll also see on the timeline that there are collaborative webinars which uh, deliver the general content for all team members, as well as specific measurement webinars, which will be for those tasked with leading and undertaking measurement work for their team. CFHI is dedicated to supporting teams through the development and collection of their data and measures and will be there to support teams through this process. You can see here some of the core content that are that typically uh, are found in CFHI collaboratives delivered over the course of the collaborative. There are a variety of key curriculum topics that are typically covered in a CFHI quality improvement collaborative. Some of these topics, which can be subject to change, may be covered in depth over the course of the collaborative, while other topics may be introduced at a more introductory level for teams to begin to address. Curriculum content includes a variety of worksheets, resources, and tools to accompany the webinars and the working time in between webinar sessions. The curriculum for this collaborative focuses on the innovations, race and base, but at the same time also ensures that teams will leave with practical knowledge and skills that are applicable beyond the collaborative focus. Keep in mind that this is a participatory collaborative where peer-to-peer -peer learning will be promoted. We will be calling upon teams to share their work and experience with others during the webinar sessions. So who should apply? The Connected Medicine Collaborative is open for all teams to apply. Specifically though, we encourage publicly funded Canadian healthcare delivery organizations, ministries, and providers to apply as well as health provider training programs, so for example, medical residency programs. We also encourage those working with multi-stakeholder and public-private partnerships to apply as well. Any proposed remote consult service should consider the publicly funded healthcare system as its payer beneficiary. Teams should be at the stage where they are ready to test, implement, or scale a remote consult service and a readiness to implement their service based on CFHI's identified criteria, which can be found in the expression of commitment on our CFHI website. Uh, in addition, CFHI is also interested in supporting teams with a northern, remote, and or indigenous focus, as well as teams from the federal level, and we certainly encourage international teams to apply as well. In terms of team roles, there are some key roles which will be important to have identified before submitting your application. Uh, it's important to note that the same person can occupy multiple roles uh, within this list. Uh, first off, there really needs to be an incredibly dedicated team lead who will be the key coordinator and motivator to ensure milestones are met and who will serve as a main point of contact for CFHI. The team lead should be the one who completes the online application form as well. This individual will be primarily accountable for the design, implementation, and evaluation of the initiative. So this really can't be an off-the-side desk function. This needs to be a fully dedicated role for this team. 
In parallel, the team lead will work very closely with the measurement and evaluation lead who will be accountable for the evaluation of the innovation, support or coordinate or supervise data analysis, regularly communicate results to various stakeholders, and will also participate in all activities related to process and outcome measurement as part of the collaborative. It is not recommended that the team lead and the measurement lead be carried out by the same person. These are the two most demanding positions on the team and should ideally be uh, carried out by separate individuals. The collaborative also recommends that you have an identified primary uh, care provider champion, a consulting specialist physician champion, a patient community advisor, a quality improvement advisor, an information technology or e-health advisor, and a local region administrative and or policy advisor. In addition to these team ro uh, key roles, teams may include other team members as needed. There's certainly no limit on team size, but having identified roles for the above will be key in the application review process. At the same time, we also expect teams to have clear support or sign-off from their senior management and CEO or highest signing authority in their organization. These roles will need to be identified during the application process and sign off approved before submitting. CFHI is proud to work with some of the great leaders in remote consult and quality improvement in the country. Here you can see our core faculty members who will be leading curriculum and coaching for uh, the collaborative. Dr. Chris Hayes, Chief Medical Officer at St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton. Dr. Claire Liddy and Ms. Margo Wilson, who you heard from earlier, as well as Dr. Gary Mazuita, uh, past president of CFPC and clinical professor in the Faculty of Medicine for UBC. We'll also have several other faculty, guest faculty members contribute to curriculum and support teams over the course of the collaborative. You also see all our lovely CFHI faces below. We are the core staff for the Connected Medicine Collaborative. Neil and myself will be the main contacts for the teams over the course of the 15 months. We also have our senior director, Jen Verma, and our in-house analyst, Kelly Stanistreet, who will work closely with the measurement leads over the course of the collaborative. For those interested in submitting an application, here are the key dates to keep in mind. CFHI staff and faculty are now available to take one-on-one -on -one calls with you to further discuss the collaborative in more depth um, and how your organization or project might fit this call for applications. We can arrange calls with you anytime between now and the close of the call for applications. You can reach out to me at my email on the slide at any time and I'd be happy to set up a call with you guys. The deadline for submission of an application is May 4th. The application is done through an online survey. You will need to contact me, Kirby Curvin, to request a unique survey link to begin the application process. I encourage you to give yourself at least a week to fully fill out the application online. You can log in and out as many times as you need to complete the full survey. Teams will be selected via merit review panel, which will take place in mid-May, with teams being notified shortly after that decision is made. Teams will need to sign an MOU no later than May 31st. The MOU is already available on the CFHI website for you to review in advance. If you have any questions about the MOU, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. Our orientation webinar will be on June 14th for all teams. Uh, and the first curriculum webinar, as mentioned, will take place September 20th. And you can see the link, uh, the web link below, which is where you can go to access all information for the collaborative, including all application um, documents and the process for beginning the application. So we hope that we've been able to answer some of the common questions we mentioned at the top of the call. This collaborative is really about uh, improving provider-to-provider -provider communication versus designing a tech solution. You don't need your full team, but you do need some key roles and sign-off uh, confirmed before applying. CFHI can help facilitate connections with others working in remote consoles in your region or province via the map or through communicating with us. We're happy to help you. Um, and uh, your remote consult solution doesn't need to be fully developed, but we do ex ideally expect that teams are ready to get started with testing, implementing, and design, uh, and evaluating over the course of this 15-month collaborative. 
So we now have an opportunity to take questions you may have. So please share with us your questions using the chat box at the bottom right of your screen. And I do believe we've had a number of questions come in, so maybe I'll just turn it over to Neil, who's been monitoring the chat box at this point. Sure, yeah, and I'll, I'll just, just for the, the sake of people who might, who may have not seen some of the questions, I'll just go over a few of them. So from uh, Kathleen Yu at BC Center for Palliative Care, so her question was, could you have general home care nurses consulting with clinical nurse specialists? And uh, Gary uh, has already responded, but I'll just reread the, his response. I don't see why not, although you might consider also looping in a physician when appropriate. Uh, but definitely uh, along these lines, um, you know, even before the call was launched or, or before we had the, the webinar, we've had questions. And we are definitely open to, to other variations uh, aside from the, uh, you know, the family physician or primary care provider linking up with the specialist medical providers. So definitely uh, something that we would uh, consider when, when you're applying, so uh, for sure. Um, what else do we have here? So, I mean, Louis Oppenheimer um, asks uh, an important question. Would you would be interested in learning how you deal with security P HIPAA issues uh, with text and email messages? Um, and that's always privacy is always something uh, that we. That we, we deal with uh, because policy and privacy issues is something that we want to make sure are at least uh, addressed and discussed during the collaborative. But in terms of, you know, the response for privacy, sorry, I'm just going to, oh, just going back to the chat response. So um, essentially, you know, we, it's I, on a case-by-case -case basis, I think privacy is uh, typically considered when we're looking at each uh, application and, and within each um, jurisdiction. So something definitely to consider. Um, other questions, Kirby, that you see? Um. Not seeing any other questions in here. I do have Jim Haggerty wrote in earlier, in Northern Ontario, we're looking to adapt the page for e-consult request to flag it for the PCP provider. Want to speak also about the case via the Ontario MD group. Gary Mazawita responded that, uh, that that's an interesting wrinkle um, and will be very interesting to see how that evolves. So that's great. Um, again, we'll also encourage more people if anyone has any questions about um, the actual collaborative, the application process, we certainly mm -hmm. welcome those at this time. Yeah. We're just going to give it a minute here or two and see if any additional questions come in. We do see some people typing, so we're just yeah. going to give it a second here. And uh, yeah, we do, while a few people are typing, I think we'll just, I think there was one more yeah. question um, from Amanda Robinson uh, at the Ministry of Health, I think in Ontario. She, she had a question for Claire. Uh, she's working with the dementia strategy and she's just wondering if BASE specifically has received feedback regarding introducing a telephone line. Uh, or if uh, there's been any thought in terms of exploring this. And I know Claire responded, and I'll just reread what she said. Um, so she, she has, the BASE initiative ha uh, hasn't uh, explored blending uh, the phone and e-consult yet. Um, uh, BASE is still maintaining a focus on asynchronous and non-urgent um, consults. Uh, but it, uh, so that was the response there. So we do have a que another question from Amanda Robinson uh, uh, saying, have you, for Claire specifically, have you ever received inquiries or feedback from physicians on a telephone line? Claire says no, but I'm wondering maybe 
do we want? Oh, and there's another question from Jim Haggerty. In Northern Ontario, we're, oh, sorry, that's the same question. Yeah, these are more from, uh, so we're just moving. Oh, people are still typing. Oh, where did everybody? There's something from Karen, Karen Tulk. Great. So Karen called, will the slides recording of the session be available? So yes, that's a great point. So what's going to happen is the recording of this webinar will be available to all participants um, in the next 24 hours or so. And um, it will be available online uh, for everyone to access, all, including any materials reference, will be made available to participants via email. Um, this is usually out within the next 24 to 48 hours. And again, this is um, a resource and recording that you can share with others from your organization who may not have been able to attend today, but would like to watch the recording and get information about the program. Um, they can do that post actual live event, which is great. Mm -hmm. I think there's uh, another question. Uh, where how do we get up here? Da -da -da. So Jack Haggerty as well uh, asked the question about funding. So how do we know if our idea is worthy of such a large grant request versus small pilot funding grant? So I mean, that, that's, we, we sort of anticipated this question. I mean, typically what we do at CSHI in terms of seed funding for our collaboratives is we um, provide to um, successful teams a specific amount, and each team would get the same amount. Typically, it would be forty to fifty thousand um, dollars. This time, because we understand that some teams and some applications will be looking at really more in the early stages of testing and implementation, and some will be looking at actually scaling the remote consult initiative across the entire jurisdiction. There are examples already. Um, in some provinces where they're, they're looking to scale remote consult across the entire province. So we wanted to match um, the funding with the need. So we won't know the answer until uh, we, we get all the um, applications, but you know, uh, definitely um, the, the, the budget for this is 600,000 across up to 15 teams. So we definitely, whatever um, is being asked, needs, there needs to be a good justification as to why you're asking for that amount. And we wouldn't uh, expect teams to ask for, for example, 400,000 for one team because unfortunately, um, you know, with the goal of reaching lots of uh, up to 15 uh, potential um, teams, we will have to divide the, the seed funding accordingly. But again, you know, we, we will, uh, parcel the, the funding um, proportionately based on uh, demonstrated need. So um, something that we'll, we'll have a better sense of once we receive the applications. Great. So actually, another, another question that we actually have come up from our previous collaborative of, as well for teams that were starting to consider their um, development of their initiative was considerations around how many specialty they should think about including into a, uh, an early design of a remote consult initiative and, and if there was benefit from focusing on one specialty or possibly two or more. I'm wondering maybe if we could just turn it, open up Claire Liddy's line maybe and turn it over to Claire just for some thoughts or feedback on your experience from base, um, starting with a few specialties and just expanding out. and how that might be a uh, beneficial or, or considerations for some of the teams thinking about where to start themselves. Just wondering maybe if Claire might have some yep. input on that. Sure. Am I, am I live? You <laughs> are. We can hear you. All right. Yeah, so um, we did start with five specialty services which were at the request of the primary care providers and interestingly we actually really we started this with one and they said, you know what, we don't really have that much of an access problem with that at that time endocrinology from our community so get us these other ones and uh, we built it from from on that basis and I think uh, being very responsive to the primary care provider um, was is very powerful way to go because often discussions about access are coming from a specialty service lens um, but I'm a family doctor so that's my lens 
Um, subsequent to that now with the teams that we've worked on in the Access, uh, the first Access Collaborative, um, and based on some work that we just did locally here, we actually had started then uh, helping uh, different regions do wait time one studies and very, very quick and dirty or quick and easy uh, projects in local clinics and uh, again doing a, a chart audit to get a sense of uh, within the local health region, you know, what are the, the areas that you're having the major access problems with. Um, and uh, we're in the middle of that right now. We're doing <clears throat> feedback sessions with the clinics, but again, it's, um, it's a great way to identify what the needs of the community are um, and, and make it a very, uh, or identify, I guess, what the local uh, problems are, which is going to then support engagement. So the, uh, the premise is always that, you know, you don't want to create a solution to something if you don't have a good uh, sense of what the problem is. So I think that's the way that we've always worked. The problem has been access to specialty services and, you know, the solution in this case was a, an interprofessional communication platform that allowed you to, to gain better access. Um, so again, local community needs being much broader than just one or two specialty services is, uh, is going to address those needs um, uh, much better. And then the issue in terms of the telephone versus sort of the e-consult or asynchronous service really comes down, um, initially for us, it was a question of the urgency. And so in our region, uh, we didn't actually have urgent access needs, um, urgent access problems, so that was actually quite easy to get same day or next day appointments to uh, different specialty services if the patient was, tr was truly urgent. It was really the non-urgent. So um, you want to define <clears throat> what is the problem that you're trying to address in which specialty areas uh, that primary care providers are asking for and then, and then go from there. Thanks, Claire. Um, so just uh, we still have a couple of minutes for uh, questions via chat, so we still encourage you to think in, uh, about uh, submitting a question. We'll try and address it. Um, one, one thing we did want to emphasize is that for this collaborative, we are hoping to get applications from teams that are closer to being ready to implement or at least test their, their remote consult service. Uh, the previous collaborative was looking at more the design and sort of the planning. So um, just in terms of, um, you know, where we want teams to be at, um, you know, we, we recognize that everybody is going to be at different stages, but the, the focus of this collaborative is for sure on uh, implementation. And I think there are Oh, uh, a ch another chat question or something that came in. Okay, so C Kathleen Yu, uh, again in BC, how to connect with others in the region considering an application can, uh, of exploring possibilities to work together. So yeah, so I've actually had a, a few private chats as well from people who are interested in connecting with um, some of those who already have uh, initiatives underway in their region. So what I would say is um, if you're interested to figure out who's already working on something in your region, uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me either now via the chat or after with my email contact on the slides, mm -hmm. I'm happy to provide that, uh, that information to you in terms of some con contact information of some of those who are leading um, some of the development of e-consult services in the various provinces. Obviously, you can start with the map that, that's referenced in the um, prospectus and is on our website. But if you actually want the contact information for those people, happy to share that with you. And I see our beautiful, wonderful Kelly Ripley has thrown my email up there. So if you're interested, uh, just, just send me an email and I'm happy to connect you. Mm -hmm. uh, Great. Okay. So I think that... Great. Okay. So uh, as you can see, just uh, for information for those who are interested in other CFHI programs, we do have a number of upcoming webinars coming in, in the next few months. So we do encourage you to take a look at CFHI's on-call uh, website to register for any of the other upcoming informational webinars that may be of interest to you. So at this time, you know, this uh, officially wraps up the informational call for the Connected Medicine Collaborative. We do uh, really appreciate you taking just a few minutes to complete the CQI survey, which always helps inform future webinars for us. 
Again, what we will be sharing out the recording as well as the chat log to all participants on, on this call. And again, my information, my contact Kirby Curvin uh, email is available in the slides uh, as well as on the website. So if you have questions following this, um, I'd be happy to connect with you. And again, if you're interested in taking a, a one-on-one -on -one call to further discuss uh, the application process and whether this is a good fit for you, we certainly are happy to do that as well. So that officially wraps up the informational call. We appreciate everyone joining us today, and we hope to uh, continue to connect and, and chat with you in the near future. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude the conference call for today. You may now disconnect your line and have a great day.